Hey everyone, I'm Marty Boardman with FlippingPhoenixHouses.com and this is part two of an interview with Dusty Figs. He's a bidder for AZ Bidder and he bids on houses down here at the Maricopa County Courthouse steps where these trustee sales take place, where these auctions take place. And then today's interview, he's going to talk about how the auction process works and what kind of properties get bid on. So take it away, Dusty. Typically what happens is once the uh, trustee sale is um, released, uh, from that point, uh, the, the sale goes to an auction. Um, now, they do have to notify the beneficiary, which is usually the bank who, who loaned on the property. Uh, the beneficiary has to approve and set their parameters of what the opening bid is um, um, and uh, whether they can postpone it or delay it or cancel it altogether, depending on what they want to do with that property, with that asset. Um, from there, it comes down here to the auction. It's in, entrusted to a auctioneer and a trustee uh, sales company to come down here and sell the property at the courthouse and or other locations, depending on where that trustee sale is. Now, is it always? How does it work? I mean, does it always happen where the the notice trustee sale is set, the sale date is set, and then the auction takes place on that specific day? How often does that happen? <laughs> very, very few times does that ever happen. So what does happen then? Well, typically what happens is uh, it'll, it'll go up for sale. You'll see it posted, okay, it's going to sell in March. Uh, but um, you have to keep watching that because that's going to change. That's going to readjust depending on what the bank and the beneficiary want to do with that property. Uh, it can take, you know, on average about 90 days before it actually goes from the beginning, uh, from the list, to actual sale at the auction. And then, and that's just average because some take months and months and months and months and months to go. So, it, so it may not go to auction on the day that the notice of trustee oh, sale says. Absolutely. Well, so what very, would very be your, seldom. And why is that? I mean, what would what would the lender do? Well, the bank's trying to see which way is going to be more beneficial for them to recoup their loss in this situation, really, is what it is. Is it better for them to take it on in as an REO? Is it better to put it as auction? Is it better to work a short sale? I mean, there's just tons of things that they're trying to figure out um, in, in the midst of all this at the same time. So, Sure. Uh, is there more than one auction that takes place at the same time? I mean, it's you know, when we're down here, it seems like there's more than just one auction here. And typically there is. I mean, depending on the load and the list and how many properties are going to sale that day, uh, there can be upwards of four or five auctions going at the same time. Um, so you've got to be able to, you know, if you're down here uh, buying for yourself, you've got to listen to all five of these auctions. Maybe there's a couple properties that you want to watch, two auctions going on the same time on other ends of the, uh, of the uh, uh, courtyard here, and, and you've got to go back and forth and bounce and make sure that you've got everything under, under control and, and, and making sure you're bidding on the right property because you've got five properties getting yelled at you all at one time. Oh, that could be really intimidating for a novice. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It, it gets intense. Plus, you've got other guys down here that are professional bidders. Uh, this is their job. Their job is to acquire properties for individuals, companies, what have you. And uh, in doing so, um, you know, they, they're, they're here, to, here to bid, here to win it. So uh, they work it. And uh, to a novice, you know, they're willing to squeeze their profits a little bit to get the property. Um, a novice might not be w willing to, and that can create some emotional turmoil, and you might bid more than you want. Exactly. All right. So, or get shut out and got to start the process all over again. <laughs> so, if you're if you're just an individual and you're down here and you're wanting to bid on a specific property, I mean, how are you going to even know that? the house was being auctioned off. I right. mean, do they call out the address of the house? or They do actually call out the address of the house. Now, again, uh, you've got to do homework beforehand, too. I mean, you've got to figure out, you know, go to the trustee sales websites or, or the counter recorder to find out when it's scheduled to, to go to sale. Then you got to get down here on that day uh, in that time slot uh, for those particular auctions. Um, and then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to provide a $10,000 cashier's check uh, deposit on the property that you're willing to bid on uh, if you are the successful bidder. Um, in, in, in which case then you would be required to pay the uh, entire amount uh, that you bid and successfully won the house for within uh, 24 hours to that trustee or to that sales company. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So how often do these sales actually take place versus getting postponed or, or canceled for some reason? Well, I mean, if you look through the list uh, of today's scheduled um, sales, uh, it would be a list of, of thousands you'd, you'd be looking at. Um, out of those thousands, the ones that postpone, the ones that cancel, the ones that go away, uh, there's only a handful of them left that, that, that go. Um, they go to sale. They go to, to, they go to actual sale, that actually get bid on. Um, 
uh, sometimes people don't even bid on them at all, and they just go right back to the beneficiary. So, mm -hmm. um, um, but but out of the thousand, I mean, you're looking at hundred approximately. Wow, okay. Uh, how do you? How does the bank set the opening bid? And when do they set the opening bid? Well, the bank has the ability to set and modify the opening bid throughout the entire process until the day that it, until the moment that it goes to sale. Um, uh, and literally, it is the moment. Uh, there's times when the auctioneer will receive a phone call during the middle of sales, and it'll be on the next property, saying, "All right, that one's actually been canceled; it's no longer for sale." Um, uh, but um, um, it, it it it's. It's always things that you got to pay attention to and, and watch for and, and, and be present for. How often does the opening bid get set at just what the borrower owes plus their arrears versus them lowering the amount to right. make it worth right. a third party wanting to bid on the right. house? Um, and that's all dependent on the beneficiary, dependent on what they feel is best for, for, for them in regards to recouping this loss that they've, that they've acquired now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in doing so, you know, whether they postpone it or whether they sell it or whatever happens, um, uh, it is it is definitely definitely a process to go through. So, so would you say like 75% of the houses that go, 75, 80% of the homes that get auctioned off down here don't don't even end up. The bids aren't even low enough then to, to bid on. They end up back with the bank. Is oh, that a good number? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe 15 to 20 percent wind up in the hands of a investor and, and, or, and an or actual a, investor or, or a homeowner or sure. you know whatever the purpose is. That's gotcha. it. All right, that's going to conclude uh, part two of this interview with Dustin Figs. Uh, be sure to tune into part three where uh, we'll talk a little bit about how you can find a specific house, how you know what loan position you're in, so on and so forth.